Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are joined by John Moore, who has his own radio show, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. The website is thelibertyman.com, and Ann Morrison, our scientist, she is at homeland-security-4u.com. And, uh, John, you've got some announcements. So what's happening? What's the latest stories you're tracking? And where do you see yes, them sir. going? Well, thank you, Dr. Bill. Uh, Private Sar, she's a Vietnam vet over the road truck driver. Uh, in the last 48 hours, he was at a truck stop in New Jersey, about 50 miles from Fort Dix, New Jersey. And there were a number of... Uh, uh, active duty, uh, uniform, U.S. soldiers uh, in uniform uh, at this truck stop with cameras and clipboards, and they were taking photographs and making notes of the truck numbers of all the refrigerated trucks for the uh, 24 hours that he was at this truck stop. So uh, we find that to be very significant and very concerning. Uh, as you mentioned in our private conversation, uh, these refrigerated trucks can be used for storing human bodies as well as moving food. Uh, right. Why they were doing this, we don't know. We know that they are doing it. Uh, they're probably continuing to. My man, you know, my man had to move on with his route. Uh, but it's very concerning. The second thing, of course, is on on Drudge right now. The Internal Revenue Service has openly admitted that they're uh, uh, persecuting conservative groups, and uh, they quote unquote apologize for what they've been doing. Uh, does that apology carry any weight? No, no. I don't think it's almost I, like it, a. It's almost like a very abusive person who's a criminally insane uh, person, and they'll apologize for being a mass murderer, but it doesn't mean they're going to stop doing it. Right. Well, uh, if they were to uh, uh, refund the resources that these conservative groups had to pay for for legal expenses and get, and copying documents, it's incredibly expensive to defend yourself from the IRS. Uh, and, and frequently, uh, the object is to break the organization and cause it to fold up, which in some cases may have happened. Right. And the problem is that the IRS has basically our back pockets, endless money in order to legally prosecute, even if it's harassment, a corporation or an individual. And the individual basically uh, can go bankrupt, just as they say in the middle and the in legal circles. Uh, you may win the, uh, the the battle if you can stay through to the end of the legal fight, but you're not going to like the ride. And no, the problem no. is, even when the other side is not guilty, you can literally bankrupt somebody or wreck their health. So physically, they die or suicide. A friend of mine, two friends, ran a business, and they spent a quarter million dollars defending themselves against the IRS. They won twice. The federal prosecutors finally said, we can keep going it's going because it doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> so they finally had to reach a settlement with them, even though they prevailed twice in front of juries. Yeah, so well, what we're seeing is a computer abuse of the idea of what justice is. Uh, I, I think, honestly, if the IRS is going to prosecute somebody, uh, there should be some mechanism where they pay also the legal costs of the person they're prosecuting. Because uh, first day, I think the IRS is illegal. I think what we should have is some kind of a flat tax based on, on utilization. But I don't want to see a VAT like the one proposed by the United Nations and used by many countries. When they brought the VAT in Canada called the Government Services Tax, they never got rid of the provincial sales tax except in a few provinces like Alberta. Uh, and what they're doing is, of course, it was a platform for political control over the public. And, right. uh, and this is always bad. I mean, you know, America started when they threw the tea off the ships in, in Boston Harbor. And the problem is the same issues are still present now hundreds of years later, only they're even worse. And now with cybernetics and supercomputers and meddlesome politicians, I mean, the more that they stay in government, the more laws they pass. And most of the time, they don't even write, read them. They're written by battalions of attorneys sequestered away in law offices where they write three to 5,000 page bills that basically, even if you're a Philadelphia lawyer, you couldn't figure them out because it's written literally by hundreds of lawyers. Right, right. And, and, and they're usually the industry lobbyists are the ones that are writing the laws. Right, and they, even when you write these laws, for example, Sibelius herself has said she doesn't understand even all the regulations, 20,000 pages so far and increasing that came out of the Obamacare bill that was over 3,000 pages. And uh, now we have the statements by Bonner and, uh, and another uh, Republican, the head of the Senate and the head of the Republican co Congress, 
that they're not going to, quote, appoint, appoint people to the death panels that are mandated by Obamacare. Uh, this is so crazy. See, we're not even in reproducing in America a socialized health care system like in Canada. What we're doing is putting in something that's, uh, that's like a chimeric monster that will deny care to people, that will not reduce costs, that will still defy and prevent new innovative health care that's a fraction of the cost, that will, will throw people in jail. For example, the first violation for doctors, a $100,000 fine, if they don't follow through in the treatment protocols of the panel, uh, once they give the diagnostic code. And it will result in denied care. It will result in dead people. And it will result Absolutely. in bankrupting the country because the costs, I mean, the cost of everything that Obama Doc, does is Doc, stupid. You need, to look at the, you need to look at the positive side. Maximum profits for the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, but that, it'll be short-lived. It's almost like, you know, the vampire is going to have a bad day when the victim is dead and there's no more blood. <laughs> They're not looking that far ahead, are they? No, no. Well, it's not far ahead, actually. I think it'll be only a year or two of Obamacare. And that thing alone, let alone the manipulation of the gold market and all the other stupid things that Obama's doing, for example, the amnesty, which is what's been pushed by this gang of eight politicians, they calculated the cost of something almost near $7 trillion to bring in amnesty, which is what it is. Uh, because they literally have trains of people, they call I don't know what they call the train, the train of death, that comes up from Guatemala and Central America, and it comes up from Mexico City. Uh, they have so many people trying to get across the border now because of the p- impending and possible future amnesty. We're going to have a massive flood of not only people who were previously deported, but all their relatives from all over the place because South America, Central America, Asia, everywhere is falling apart. And uh, it you know, may be bad here in America, but it's so much better than anywhere else. People are scrambling to get in on the game before it's closed, the doors closed. They are, and we've become the laughing stock of the world with our loose borders. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you went to Mexico and you didn't have a job and you didn't have proof that you were going to you know, apply for citizenship properly, you'd be deported. If you went Absolutely. to Guatemala, Venezuela, anywhere, uh, you'd be treated like any other country. Like, you're out, put you on a train or a plane and get you the heck out of here. But here in America, people can park their butt and it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's, and the problem is, you see, they could just apply for a work visa card and, and just start working. That's right. That's right. properly. I don't see. I don't see. I don't understand this amnesty garbage. Just like take all these seven, eleven million people, have them apply for a card, or deport them. It's that's is that difficult? That takes a lot it's of not that, three it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. That's the way it should be done. Right. So if they applied, and the same thing with everything. I mean, Obamacare should have been. We're going to let people buy in and have Medicare. We're going to control the cost of drugs, and and uh, we're going to allow nutraceuticals to be on an equal footing. I mean, there's a place for drugs. Drugs have a place, but it should be very minimalist and very minimum. When you start using drugs exclusively and you push out nutraceuticals and you make surgery so exclusive that you have prices that reach to the ceiling, when you got malpractice lawsuits by predatory lawyers that basically drives the cost of everything through the ceiling, you know, uh, you know, a doctor can be sued for more money in one case than they made in their entire life. Uh, you can't. Easily. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. If you do that, you're going to have a situation where, in the very near future, you're going to have. And the, the problem is, you see, basically with socialized health care, you're going to have the entire population on hook for lawyers filling their pockets. And some states don't even have caps, like Oregon, California. They passed laws in the '70s which made it more rational. But Oregon, forget it. I mean, uh, it's insane. So. Uh, it is. It my, is, uh, my news, I want to get your response on this. My news is that, that is impending is that Fukushima is breaking down. We're getting more radiation. San Onofre, basically, we have to stop from restarting or it'll blow up. And the uh, novel coronavirus, two out of Saudi Arabia, spreading in eastern Saudi. And the China is trying to put the, the, the news lid on the H7N9, which is exploding across absolutely. China. And it's only a matter of time before the, those plagues arrive. And I'll turn that part over to you and Ann. I'll be jumping out of here, Doc. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. Again, the LibertyMan.com has some great equipment there. They're great if you're a prepper, if you want a prepper consultant. John is the guy to contact if you want to know what to do to prep up for a future that is very probable. Welcome back 
back, and uh, joining us is Ann Morrison. Her website is homeland-defense4u.com. Uh, Ann, you have a number of uh, new announcements. You always do amazing research across the scientific realm. <coughs> and you have, uh, <coughs> you're tracking everything from space weather to the novel coronaviruses to sinkholes to God knows what in terms of scientific regime. But, uh, you know, I tell people, don't be freaked out. Take notice of things and then take action and leave the rest to prayer and to God. Uh, but what, what's uh, what's brewing this week? Well, uh, depends on where you want to start. We've got uh, the earthquakes uh, number is down. It's about 200 right now per week above uh, 2.5 magnitude. And the uh, volcanoes are... are, uh, are uh, well, remember we had the Mayan volcano, and uh, it killed five people, I think, and they've got a six-kilometer radius permanent danger zone around Mayon. And, where's uh, Mayon? Uh, where's that located, by the way? Oh, that's in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Right. How many people were killed by that? Um, thought it was five. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a lot of strange earthquakes happening in the in Kamchatka Peninsula of the Philippines and that Far East area. Um, we also are seeing some strange things in the sky. UV alerts uh, this spring and summer have never been so high. You mentioned uh, over the last week or so, UV alert for Phoenix, Arizona, UV alert for Mexico City. And then, of course, the latest is the, uh, uh, you know, the Plan B, which is the sounding rockets launched from Marshall Islands. Uh, let's get into some of these things because there's some strange things the government or the quote, above government is doing, and then uh, yeah, and also NASA's Grover uh, debuts on the Greenland's ice sheet. What's going on there? Well, okay, boy, they're all they're all related. Believe it or not, they're all related. Okay. The Greenland ice sheet, the sounding rockets, in uh, at the magnetic equator of the Earth in the Marshall Islands and the UEB index alerts. By the way, the alert today is in the Pacific Northwest, and it's for the entire state of Washington and down into half of Oregon. And yeah. what that means, when it's an alert, it means that the UV index is above what would be considered normal for that area of the country. Mm. Right. Now, so we're, we're seeing UV levels City, that have never been... Yeah, we have been seeing levels higher than we've ever seen before. Please continue. Well, yeah, they upgrade. They used to just if it was they had the scale that went up to eleven plus. So, so uh, they had a scale that went uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the next one was eleven plus. But now they are um, now they're actually measuring them and giving us numbers like sixteen for Mexico City. And that's during the hardest part of the day, of course. Now, 16, yeah. if you're out and you're unclosed, you're going to burn seriously. You, yeah. You've then, got to take yeah. cover. It, when it also means crop failure. Yeah. yeah, 45 minutes, and I remember one of my old botanist teachers over 30 years ago, because he did marine bacteriology and uh, it, back before I went to medicine 40 years ago. If you get a UV surge for as little as 45 minutes, you can ruin a crop. You can destroy a rainforest. You can damage the phytoplankton in the upper benthic layer of the ocean at the top 30 feet or, you know, 10 meters. So uh, obviously UV alerts are bad. Uh, solar sunstorms, CMEs, that strobe the earth are very bad. Uh, ultraviolet light levels, and what, what they did was they put particles up in the upper atmosphere, hundreds of miles up, and they're looking for airflows. I w- reported before that the, the first level and the most dangerous level of the quote, geoengineering of the planet, you can't see it. It's 73 to 80,000 feet, and it's primarily nanoparticles that don't generate a chemtrail. Uh, they're putting up nanoparticle thorium, aluminum, and uh, barium, which is 10,000 times more toxic to, to the brain and the bone marrow and the lead. Uh, but these nanoparticles are being put up there to, they're having some very bad effects on the oxygen level in the upper atmosphere. They're literally chewing up the ozone. What will that do, Ed? Because this is beyond stupid. This is like uh, obscenely evil to be doing these kinds of experiments where they literally could punch a hole in the ozone layer and burn an entire state, for example, or a country. Okay, what they're doing with these sounding rockets and what they did off of the uh, Massachusetts coast a couple of years ago was they send these uh, rockets up filled with, like you said, uh, uh, trimethyl aluminate, and uh, what they use that for 
they make uh, that makes uh, white tracer clouds. And but how does it do it? it? It burns the oxygen. So they send these rockets above the stratosphere, which contains the ozone. And ozone is O3. That's oxygen, three oxygen atoms. And uh, they release it in what's called the ionosphere, which ham radio operators know all about. And uh, then as the particles fall, they fall through the stratosphere and through the the ozone layer. Now the ozone layer keeps us from being uh, hit here on the Earth's surface with ultraviolet rays, especially uh, band C, but all of them are are caught by that by that layer, by the ozone layer. And what right. happened after they did their sounder ro- sounding rocket up off of Massachusetts was that an ozone hole uh, opened up over Greenland. Now that ozone hole is is a loss of oxygen in the stratosphere, uh, specifically ozone. And right. when that happens, then we don't have that protection against the ultraviolet violet that is um, that comes from the sun when there's a well a flare uh, a big flare will, will send quite a bit of ozone now you have two things when you're measuring flare one is intensity and the scales are b c m x and x the second x and um and uh, duration. So if it lasts 30 seconds, you might be able to survive that. But I've seen uh, flares that continue to emit ultraviolet for over an hour. And what the scientists say is that the UV strobed Earth. Well, that means that the UV got through the ozone layer because there was a hole in it, and it actually impacted the the uh, surface of the earth now what when this happened after that ozone hole opened over greenland after they had done the sounding rocket experiment um was that the ice sheet the entire ice sheet on greenland melted now it didn't didn't melt down too far but the top of it melted so that it was visible from their satellites and they they posted pictures of it there was a right. there was an yeah. anomalous day on greenland when the ice sheet became invisible you can also yeah. crack it because ultraviolet light goes pretty deep. So it not only creates these lakes and ponds and settling areas, but it also can crack the ice sheet uh, quite down quite deep. Yeah, so what they're doing now is they're, send, they're sending this uh, Grover, which is a ground rover. So it's kind of like the rovers that are on Mars, except that they're using it here on Earth. And uh, they are, they're using it in Greenland. They've started using it May 6th, and they'll work into June. And what they're doing is they're measuring the different layers of the ice as, towards the surface of Greenland, because they want to find out how stable the ice is on Greenland. I mean, this was an anomalous thing that happened um, when this UV melted the ice sheet, the top of the ice sheet on Greenland. It shows then, you how fragile the Earth is when you mess with it. We come back, we'll continue. Yeah, I hear the music too. We come back, we're going to talk about these 17 airmen suspended at the uh, 71st Missile Wing at Minot Air Force Base. Interesting. I'm sure you uh, watch uh, and check out the news on Drudge regularly and some of the other great uh, sites that that do that. We talked. John talked about the fact the IRS is admitting targeting conservative groups and quote apologizes, which I find bizarre. Um, we have the uh, situation where the government is literally geoengineering and playing around with the upper atmosphere. I had a chance to not only be a doctor taking care of pilots flying out of Buckley and Peterson in Colorado, they were working on the upper atmospheric 73 to 80,000 foot geoengineering of the upper uh, uh, troposphere, not the stratosphere, which is where they're putting this, these nanoparticles. Putting them up there to destroy the ozone layer is incredibly stupid. Uh, we have uh, interesting news. I think uh, the feds are freaked out about a printing of a 3D gun because they gave the plans how you can print it. Obviously, they don't have the printer, but the plans were literally downloaded by, in a few hours, I think a couple hundred thousand people. The, uh, you know... It's not surprising that I announced the other day that I was a little freaked out by the news, not a little but a lot, that it gets overwhelming, especially when we have what I call groups of the public 
that actually get viciously ignorant about the fact that you raise questions about reality. Even when it's posted up on, say, the news, on national news, where they black out and morph somebody's voice and they say, yeah, the engineers say, if they restart San Onofre, it'll blow up. Or that uh, the Fukushima Daiichi is literally killing people and sterilizing them in China, in, in Japan, and the population are basically dying off. We're literally seeing, I, and as I mentioned it the other day, that the Fukushima Daiichi is literally aborting humanity. It is a radiological abortion of the human race. Uh, and people don't grasp this. They actually get a little vicious over the fact you raise facts. But we need to do something. The most important thing we need to do is pray. And then get God to tell us what we need to do next because it's there's so much going on here. If Benghazi doesn't take down Hillary Clinton and Obama, we are toast. Because Obama will become a functional dictator. And God knows what his next job will be. Maybe Secretary General, as you mentioned, of the United Nations. So, And Hillary Clinton... Uh, she can lie through her teeth and she can look get all angry, but the fact is her office, and this is the report that I, I listened to the other night with uh, Michelle Shostodovsky from globalresearch.ca and the documents that he was able to dig up that 300 Al-Qaeda terrorists were ordered by CIA operatives to go in and kill this ambassador because he wasn't going along with the program of shipping heavy arms to overtopple the Syrian regime and they decided to, 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 to tie up loose ends and kill him. And that's why there's such a vigorous cover-up. Uh, it should, if this is worse than Watergate, it should be the thing to remove the Obama tumor from the White House and uh, make certain that Hillary Clinton doesn't come back like the Wicked Witch of the West and become our president in 2016. Physically the most evil person I've ever met on the planet in my entire life was Hillary Clinton. Well, um, yeah, um, you know, we, we're under... Um, we're, we're under at least three different biowarfare uh, bacteria and virus right now that have been right. let loose. Uh, at least I would call the, the novel coronavirus that arose out of Saudi Arabia, biowarfare, right. I'd call the H7N9 uh, virus that occurs in China so far as yeah. a biowarfare weapon. Yeah, they're and spreading like crazy. They're, yeah, they're sort of and spreading the, like crazy, by the way. It, which is spreading uh, fast, and uh, then we have the CRE problem, um, which carbapenem uh, resistant Enterocarbacteriaceae. Which, by the way, if you get in a U.S. hospital, you get CRE, you have a fifty percent chance of dying within forty-eight to seventy-two hours. And uh, the main concern there is if they get it out of the hospitals and get it into the public health arena, then we're all toast. Because this, this, this bacteria doesn't have any, uh, there's no antibiotics that will kill it. And so, like one doctor said, we may be going into the post-antibiotic era. Uh, and I will ask my patients, I'll have to ask my patients, do you want to be treated with the older antibiotics that are going to destroy your kidneys, or do you want to have amputation? Do you want to be on dialysis for the rest of your life, or shall I take your arm? And in fact, there was a there was a picture of a woman who had had uh, her both her arms and both her legs amputated because they could not get rid of this CRE uh, bug. Well, I I could get rid of it, and I'll tell you why. I'm not being arrogant, or it's very simple. High hyperbaric oxygen. We're talking about 100 percent, and. Uh, you use immunoglobulins, Immunomax or intravenous immunoglobulins, IVIG and our antipathogenic Silver 100, Neutrodyne, Diatomic Iodine, and Alamax Alamed. Uh, and we guarantee it if we're able to give, provide some of them, with some of those we can even give intravenously, uh, we would wipe out the pathogen. And uh, the problem is, you see, the medical system is specifically designed that if you're an innovator, you can't provide new treatments. For example, we're... I'm consulting with Dr. Apps, who's worked in 30 years. He's an MD, uh, uh, holistic MD, naturopath, and he's brilliant. And they've developed with their team up in Washington State a way of actually turning off cancer by stimulating cancer cell apoptosis. Now, they include some of the things that we already carry uh, in a nutraceutical cocktail, but they work on two ways, stimulating the four pathways to make cancer cells go through program cell death or apoptosis, and the second is mTOR to block the, uh, quench the mTOR system that makes the cancer cells get resistant to the treatment. Um, the, they're getting some amazing success stories. And they made also an intravenous form, so they can give that. But it's expensive now. The IV form is thirty thousand a month. <coughs> the uh, 
<clears throat> per os, we call it the oral form, is about 2500 a month. But uh, what people need to understand is that innovative treatments, whether it's innovative economies, innovative medical treatments, ways of dealing with, quote, enemies, uh, novel ways of dealing with illegal immigration, we basically on this show talk about solutions to virtually every problem. It's not being implemented because the powers that be want dialectics and evil. And it's not that they're stupid, but they're evil. Okay, people need to grasp that. And you understand, we're not dealing with just stupidity. We're dealing with malevolent, black liquid evil. That's why people like Hillary Clinton they get uh, you know bent out of shape and get angry at people asking good questions. She has a hell of a lot of nerve. But she's got a 14-foot-plus brickle reptilian monstrosity in it, avataring the husk of human flesh that's been cursed by our ancestors many centuries. So it's not surprising that her, because she's very intelligent, avatar by a transdimensional entity, is not surprisingly in a position where this can just slide right off her back, and before you know it, she's elected as a Democratic candidate for the coming election. And there's lots of good Democratic candidates, but they're not only female, but black, like uh, uh, our candidate we talk about all the time from the LaRouche Foundation, Keisha Rogers. But we don't have that. And then we got idiots like uh, our vice president who makes the most insane statements and has this Cheshire cat smile while they're doing horrifying things. I mean, unbelievable things to the economy, unbelievably stupid things in foreign policy, arming al-Qaeda and then trying to say that the chemical weapons are in the hands of the Syrians. Bashar al-Assad is not that stupid. If he did cross the red line, the, new, the Israelis would nuke them immediately. And right now they're, in a sense, trying to do the dirty work of NATO and America because Obama knows that this is going to blow back on him, especially after Benghazi. Benghazi should remove Obama and Hillary Clinton. It should straighten up the State Department. And by the way, they've been purposely removing generals from the theater of operations of the war over there in the Mideast and the Persian Gulf. And uh, Petraeus is just another example that he crossed the wrong political lines and they basically removed him from office. Uh, what do you think, Ian? This is pretty obscene, isn't it? And then all our false flag terrorists like the Boston Marathon bombing, this is all to make sure that they can cow the population. The next big event I expect is a nuclear event, either a dirty bomb or medical waste bomb, and a sporting event coming up. And if that happens, then uh, you'll have TSA and Homeland Security everywhere, just like... It'll be unbelievable. The biggest growth industry in America will be to be uh, guys with a blue glove on, flicking it at your wrist, and then beckoning you to come for a cavity search. People say, no, that won't happen. You know, next Christmas they'll see, they'll have Christmas uh, commercials that say, bend over and shop your favorite shopping mall. Uh We want to make you safe. Don't worry. Bombs won't go off while you're trying to pick out decorations because we've examined every cavity. Welcome back, and um, yeah, these, the science of this is pretty stark and you know, good thing I have my calm mind sitting on my desk. <laughs> you need to have calm mind and a lot of prayer to deal with this every day. Uh, and especially when people want to think that you're a nutball or you're a conspiracy theorist as if it's an insult. It actually should be considered a, con- a compliment because it means you're willing to analyze the data, you're willing to look at the best sources, then you're willing to pray on it and decide, what do I do next? Uh, tell us about the latest news in these other areas, and then I want to open up a few other news items. By the way, if you have any questions out there, want to question us in any earth changes topical uh, issue, uh, martial law, God knows what Obama is doing next. Um, you know, refusing to appoint members to Obamacare's most notorious panel called the Death Panel. <laughs> I mean, th- this is cra- pretty crazy stuff. So, what's the latest, Dan? Well, we've got a uh, burning landfill up here by uh, Lambert Airport, which is the main, is the international airport that comes into St. Louis. Right, and that's the uh, big, big one, yeah. Big it's airport. a big landfill, and uh, it's emitting um, hydrogen sulfide and benzene. So, of course, people around the, the landfill are complaining. <laughs> you know, hydrogen sulfide is uh, dangerous to human health. It can kill you. Right. And uh, it's also... Okay, you did it real fast, too, by the way. It's five parts per million will knock you to the ground, 10 to 15 will kill you. Yeah. Kill you. And 
and it's a known yeah. it's a known uh, agent. It's, it's a known uh, compound that is exhausted by landfills, and so what they've been doing is just. Uh, just firing it off on a smokestack. But that's not stopping the fire. The fire is continuing, and it's within a quarter mile of uh, what's called the West Lake Landfill, which is a known storage site for radioactive materials from the early 70s, 1970s. And now they say that this fire is not going to burn into this radioactive material because this radioactive material was, was put into a quarry. Right. But, but not everybody believes that. And right. the state of uh, Missouri has already filed suit against this, this uh, Republic Services Landfill Management Company. And uh, it, it says that, that none of the air is radioactive. Well, you know, unless you measure it, I'm, I'm not sure how, sure how you can make that, that statement. They well, are going to move some of the people. If you, have, if you have your pundit wand and you're an attorney, and you can make a public statement in a court uh, that was no evidence. Uh, you know, say Zim Zalabim, and all of a sudden there's no radiation, even though uh, just like the trees around the areas where they do above ground nuclear testing in Arizona and the proving grounds for nuclear warfare back in the 40s and 50s, those trees remobilized after they burned. A lot of radioisotopes were absorbed from the above ground nuclear testing. That whole area, that triangular area of the western United States, anything that burned that was growing and living and pulled in those radioisotopes, remobilized them when those forests burned. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that smoke that came. Well, actually, if you saw a red, a red sunset, uh, when was that, last year or the year before? Well, it's been over the years that uh, you knew that that smoke was coming from the west and that it probably contained radioactivity. Right. The other thing uh, is in the news is things like, the news report I have here that I got off of Drudge, uh, Russia says that it's going to continue selling missiles to Syria. We're on the edge of a nuclear war in the Middle East. It's even not surprising that we don't have evidence yet, although it may have already been used, is that these experts, top experts, and many nuclear bombs are the Israelis. The Russians, when they discovered red mercury in my small nukes, didn't really pursue it that much, although they had suitcase-style nukes with the uh, polonium, uh, based uh, in nuclear fuses. The Israelis advanced it to using micro lasers, micro capacitors, other technologies that miniaturized micronuclear bombs that are tunable. And in fact, it was my evidence that I found that it was Israeli operatives working under the CIA that put the micro nukes in the World Trade Center to cause the demolition of 9 11. And it wouldn't surprise me that some of the missiles that are being used to take out these facilities in uh, Damascus actually may have contained not conventional warheads, but a micro nuke. And so when Russia is selling missiles to Syria, they have the Hoot supercavitation torpedo, they've got the Akans hypersonic cruise missile, uh, they've got the Alexander. I mean, our Navy is toast. If we start a war there, we're going to see most of our Navy go to the bottom of the Persian Gulf very quickly. They are deploying the S-300 aircraft system, and, and, and the well-trained army of the Syrians is just sitting back and just retaking territory despite the fact that the terrorists have got chemical weapons and with their conventional weapons, the Syrians will just continue chewing away and chewing away until eventually there's nobody stupid enough to go to war against the Syrian army. And if they ever cross that boundary and start actually trading a no-fly zone, I expect the Russians are just going to say to the Syrians, just go for it. Fire your missiles at their carrier group and see what they do then. Because if they do, is the Syrians have advanced chemical and biological weapons that they can use if they just lob one bomb at, at Israel of advanced chemical or biological weapons, it's the end of the state. The state of Israel will cease to exist. Well, I can, uh, maybe the state of California will cease to exist if they pursue starting up San Onofre. Oh, that's going to go. There's no way. I'll, I'll go down there and personally lay across the road if they try to move a truck in there. I'm going to sue them. There's dozens of organizations that are, and what I, the word I have is they're going to raise the rates now here in California 11% because of uh, Southern California Edison. And because of San Onofre, they're going to raise the rates 11%, and it's retroactive, which means you're going to get not just a raise in the rates from now on, but retroactive into last year. So they're going to nail us with hundreds of millions of dollars of costs of stupid design, stupid faux engineering, and and threatening us that they're going to restart the plant at lower power levels, which will cause it to explode and irradiate up to 20-plus million Americans. 
That's possible because if, you know, it hasn't been running now for, what, over a year? Has it been over a year now? Yeah, it's over a year. It's a, and, and the fact is, according to this engineer who's on a uh, major news network, I don't want to mention any of the cartoon news network or the other ones, he basically said, uh, with his voice morphed in a you know, shadow of his silhouette, that uh, even if the plant is not um, it restarted at 70% power and say rea- uh, reactor number two, that it could go critical. The fact is there are always lots of containment, and if they lose the boronated waters, we mentioned yesterday with Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, that's his radio name, not his real name, because he is a true international expert in on nuclear safety, um, working currently. He's not like a retired uh, worker, a very good person like uh, uh, you know some of the other nuclear experts that occur on the media. I won't mention any specific names, but... This is just an example of the craziness that's going on in this country. And we have <clears throat> levels of incompetence on the part of our senators and congressmen, whether it's health care. At least the state senators are basically saying, we're not going to fund Obamacare. We're not going to accede to any government con- grabbing guns. We're just not going to let it happen. And uh, states like Oklahoma that basically said they're not going to do it. Uh, the exclusive Benghazi talking points underwent 12 revisions scrubbed of terror reference. Why? Why? Because... It was ordered by the CIA operative on you know, guns for hire, Al Qaeda terrorists. It was a transfer point for weapons, and now they transferred those people to kill the Syrians. And they're killing Syrian Christians, burning down Syrian Christian churches, threatening fathers that if they don't become a human bomb, they're going to execute the family, and they do if they don't cooperate. And if they try to escape in the night, they track them down and kill them. And if they escape further, they know where their family is, if their family is still in the country, and they capture and execute them. This is the kind of craziness that our government is supporting under Obama because we have our four higher terrorists. It's that crazy. That's why Obama has to go. We, can't, we, we won't survive another four years waiting for Obama to be terminated from office. We will not survive. It's just not going to happen. Uh, we will be in so much trouble if he manages to stay another six months. I mean, they could have this war in the Middle East to literally close off the Strait of Hormuz, uh, destroy the world economy, and start a regional war which will spread the biological weapons. And I think the H7N9 and the coronavirus are the first wave of biological weapons following the currency wars that are going on with China and Russia. This is the first wave of biological weapons that are launched in the mid, in the mid and far east. Oh, speaking uh, of think? which, the uh, Japanese yen actually <clears throat> reached uh, 100 to the dollar. Yeah, well, in other words, it's it's blowing, they're blowing the, the right now. Really, yeah, well, what, is it, you mean, rising in value or dropping? We're, we're depreciating. The dollar is depreciating. Yeah, well, it depreciated 15% at least because that's what the stock market appreciated. It, it's, not, it's not because it's better this year. And we're only talking about, what, five months in? Right. In five months, it depreciated the dollar 15% with Obama's crazy policies. Uh, I guess I would say if the dollar was cheap and ben, ben Bernanke and Obama were shepherds, you wouldn't want to leave the sheep alone with these guys. <laughs> if you well, get my you drift. you know, all the administrations have problems. <laughs> no, these guys are in a, in, a, in a catastrophically, monumentally, I mean, they make Nero almost look good. They're that bad. That's bad. It's bad. We need to pray to God. We need to get active. We need to also take our calm mind to deal with the stress of this so we don't freak out. And we need to take action to prep ourselves for what could happen. 